Hi there, Alana here. You're listening to the Praying Christian Women podcast with me and Jamie Hampton. How's it going, Jamie? It is going well. How about you? I'm doing well too. We are bringing you guys a coffee break, which is exciting. We love getting your questions about prayer. And this one I think is going to lead to some great discussion. So I'm excited about that. If you guys have questions for coffee break episodes, you can submit those to us at prayingchristianwomen.com slash questions. And let's uh, dive into a word of prayer. God, we just thank you for this time to talk about prayer and just answer this really good question um, just about sharing revelations and being able to hear from you. Um, thank you for the gift of prayer. Thank you that we are able to connect with you, that we're able to receive from you, and that we're able to use what you have given us to walk out our faith and to walk out our faith in community with others, that you give us things that we can share with other people, that we can lift each other up um, and encourage one another through the things that you speak to us. Um, and we just pray that you'll help us to work out how that looks in our everyday prayer lives and just bless this time and be glorified in it. Amen. Amen. All righty. Do you want to introduce our question for today? Yes. Okay. So I have not gotten permission from this person to share her name, so I'm not going to, um, but this is, a, this is a question from a listener and this was great. I just thought this is so timely and um, because this has happened to me and um, I think it's, it's applicable to a lot of us. So I'm going to paraphrase here. So she said that um, many years ago, this listener was supposed to go on a mission trip and they hadn't heard about visas getting approved. And so there was about two weeks before they were supposed to travel. As she was praying in her personal prayer time, she got confirmation really that, well, maybe not confirmation, but she really felt a peace that they were not going to go, that the visa situation mm -hmm. might not work out. And she was had, she had peace about it. So mm -hmm. in the meantime, um, you know, she was thinking, well, of course, God wants us to go on this mission trip. I just need to pray harder. But um, she didn't say anything about this feeling to her team. And the team continued to meet for prayer to push the visas through, you know, just prayer and petition, asking God to get these visas to come through. And she said that um, she didn't say anything about what God had shown her to the team. She still attended the meetings and she prayed, but she felt like an imposter while she was praying. Mm hmm because she didn't really think that it was, it was like going through the motion yep. of prayer without, I, being, I get it. Right. Yep. So when they finally got the message that the visas were not approved, everyone was very disappointed, but she wasn't because mm -hmm. she felt like she knew. So mm -hmm. she's wondering, like, should I have said something ahead of time to prepare them for this? Or, you know, or, or she was afraid to speak up because she thought people would say, well, you don't have faith. We need to ask more. God says you don't have, cause you don't ask. So that's a really, I love this. Question. Isn't that a great question? Now there's another part to this, which is very personal. And there is a person, um, that a close family member in the hospital and everyone in the family is praying for this person to come through and be fine. And she feels like God has given her a release to pray that because she believes that person's going to go to be with the Lord. Mm -hmm. So the question is, should I tell people this or is that going to, you know, how is that an encouragement I, to tell people, mm, sorry, I already know this person's going to go with the Lord. Yeah. So it's a very tough question. So she said, you know, I, why? And so this is so many questions, but the question is why do I have these answers when others around her don't, mm -hmm. if they're going to be unhappy to hear the answers? Like, how is that yeah. encouragement? She feels like when we're told something from the Lord that it should be given as encouragement. I mean, that even gives, that even goes into the area of prophesying over the church, you know, giving encouragement to the body or exhortation. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, very uh, interesting oh, yeah. question. Isn't I, this great? Yes. I have so many thoughts about this. So let's, let's do the first one first. We'll kind of warm up with the easier half, which is this thing about the mission trip, mm -hmm. because I had something basically exactly the same where mm -hmm. my husband and I met, we got married. Our plan was to move to Siberia and become missionaries. By the time we had our first child, I knew that I knew that I knew that we weren't going on the mission field. I don't think but I knew we, that about you. I don't think I knew that. No, we were still raising support. 
-hmm. My husband would still like every time he'd say, yeah, we're going to be in Russia in 18 months. And like, he'd put a time on it. And every time he said that my stomach did this twisty thing, I'm like, yeah, actually we're not. Did you tell him that? No. Okay. (laughs) I did not. Okay. Um, My default, because it sounds like this listener is a very discerning person, like Mm -hmm. more discerning than the average believer. And so if you're in this case, you have been in a situation like that. God has told you something about someone or about a situation. And you have that question, well, am I meant now to say this to everybody? And what I have discovered myself being a discerning person who sometimes gets these specific types of things is the default is that God tells me these things so that I can be prepared and I can pray. That is my default Mm. reason. Cause I used to be like, okay, well, if God tells me something, then it's because I'm supposed to tell this person. Like, I don't want to sound like a weirdo, but like God told me that Scott and I were going to get married, like just a couple weeks after we met, I did not consider it my job to go and share that with Scott. (laughs) Right. Uh, (laughs) I would never, Yeah, I would never suggest anybody do that. So my default is always, if I get a revelation from the Lord or what I believe is a revelation, the default is always, I am meant to be like Mary and to treasure that in my heart until God also tells me to share that with somebody else, right? And Mm -hmm. assuming you're getting these types of revelations, that does mean you have some discernment, which means if God wants you to say something to somebody, he's going to let you know that too. So let's say... I'm going to, I'm going to do something weird. Like, let's say Jamie, like we've moved now. So our families are, live farther apart from each other. It would, it would be like a whole day excursion for us to get together. Whereas before it was just, you know, like an hour drive. Okay. So let's say I knew that I knew that I knew that God was going to work things out so that you would live and be our new next door neighbors. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I knew that like God just, he downloaded it into my head that the Hamptons are going to live right next door to us. Okay. My default reaction to that is, holy cow, that's so stinking cool. I can't wait for it to happen. And I'm going to pray for it to happen, but I'm not yet going to mention it until I also get the release from God. So then maybe you say like, I'm, I, I don't know what to do. My husband's got this job offer. It means that he can work remotely. Then at that point, I might say, well, do you know what? But if I feel like I have permission from the Lord, right. then I would say, you know what? I was actually praying about this and then I would share it. But only if I felt a secondary prompting mm-hmm. from the Lord in addition to the original. So as far as this listener goes with the visa thing, mm-hmm. I actually feel like she did the right thing. Yeah, I do too. She had the information. She continued to be part of the group. She didn't sit hoity-toity and be like, you guys are all so stupid praying for the visas to come through. Don't you know that it's not going to work? She still was trying to be an encouragement, like a practical encouragement to Mm -hmm. them. And yet I do believe that the reason God told her was so that she could be prepared, so that she could be praying for the people in her group to be prepared, things like that. Mm -hmm. I think that is so good. So I think... Piece of, inv- piece of advice number one, if you get what you feel is a revelation from God and you really believe it, um, then ask yourself, how is this preparing me to pray? Yes, exactly. That's a great question to ask. <clears throat> Assume that any revelation could be wrong, right? I think we've had plenty uh, of episodes yes. about that. So please go back and listen to those types of episodes. Mm-hmm. And second, assume that the only reason God told you that is so that you could pray. And then... If you feel continual promptings, you can start asking God, is it time for me to share this with others somehow? Yeah, I think that's really good. And, you know, in the situation, another thing that I think could be interesting is when you get that revelation to date it and write it in a journal so that it's Mm -hmm. there, so that there's no question from you or anyone else that it was actually written at that time. Because, you know, it, what could be interesting is when the visas didn't go through. If you have like maybe one person in the group is really struggling and is like, man, my Mm -hmm. faith is shaken. I prayed for that. Why didn't God give us that? Maybe this listener could have um, gone back to that person and, and said, you know what? In my journal on this day, I really felt God saying, this is my will for this. And there, I don't know the reason, but God revealed to me ahead of time that this is what was going to happen. He's still in control. This wasn't Satan mm-hmm. snatching this trip out of our hands. This mm-hmm. was God mm-hmm. in his sovereignty, you know, I don't know. That might, it depends. That, that particular thing 
It depends, mm-hmm. but it might be good if you're not sure what to do with the revelation to date it and write it and just make sure that it's there in writing so that you can go back to it and remember exactly what it was and, and go back to test it and, and mm-hmm. you know, things like for that. Sure. But maybe there will be a use for that revelation later. Like you have a story, don't you, about a revelation that you got that you wrote down and then mailed to your friend or gave to for your my friend? friend but, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, yeah. So I had a friend who was struggling with some infertility. She and I prayed together for basically for the ability to conceive. I was praying for her again that evening and truly, truly felt like God was going to answer our prayers. So I wrote a letter. I dated it. Basically, it was something that I intended to give her at her baby shower. It was like, congratulations. It's, you know, here's the date. Today we prayed that you would be able to conceive. I so strongly believe that God has plans to answer that prayer that I want to congratulate you on the baby that you're, you know, about to deliver. And I think it was like within two years, not, so not crazy long after, you know, I don't think she went home and got pregnant that day, but I'd have to like do the math and I don't feel like doing that, but a little you know, creepy. Was, I, no, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I know it would be. And so like at her baby shower, I was able to like give her that envelope. I had it sealed. So like I sealed it and wrote the date, like on the envelope. So, you know, oh, it that's was just, cool. that's how convinced I was like this, this was going to happen. I love um, that. But I also like, I, I feel like it definitely would have been wrong for me to give her that sooner because there, there are times where I'm going to hear wrong. And I think it would be the worst possible thing you could do to a friend in that situation to give what amounts to false hope, you know? So take everything with a grain of salt and yeah, don't feel like you've got to share everything. I've got another neat story about that. So I remember really clearly our son was in the NICU. So our second son was born with a lot of brain trauma and was touch and go for quite a while. And we had just met with a neurologist and had gotten a very, very bleak prognosis. And at some point during the day, Scott said to me, like, we're, we're not going to go to Russia. Like that was when he actually realized like, we're never going to make it on the mission field. Right. Um, and so I was talking to a friend later that day and I never realized that I had said this to her. <laughs> But supposedly at some point I told her that I didn't think we were ever going to end up on the mission field and that we were probably going to have a child with special needs that would keep us from being able to go. And she remembered that conversation. And so she was like, yeah, I sort of feel like you kind of had an inkling that this was going to happen. And again, it, it made it so that I could just sit back and realize, you know what, God had this plan from the beginning. It didn't feel like... God was surprised by any of this. And it was a a nice reminder, you know, God is in control. And I think a lot of times he tells us things things ahead of time just to prepare us, right? It doesn't mean that you need to jump into action Mm -hmm. unless that action is prayer. It's just God's way of preparing you. It is. Well, so I have in, uh, so we, we were referencing episodes of hearing from God and there's episode 38. Is it me, God or the devil talking, which we talk a little bit about discerning God's voice and how to know. Um, mm-hmm. But in terms of examples, so in episode 62, um, I talked with my former pastor's wife, Christy, um, about their story of stepping out in faith when her husband felt called to plant a church. Mm -hmm. And she, that in that we talk a little bit about, she routinely hears things before her husband from God. Like if they've got a decision to make almost always, or even if they don't know there's a decision to make, like they, Mm -hmm. she knew they were going to move. Right. And, but her husband doesn't usually hear at the same time. And what she has learned is she always waits and leaves room for him hear personally from God and that mm-hmm. serves as a confirmation. So right. that's kind of how God has been working in their marriage. And I think that's a really neat thing too in a marriage. If you do feel like you tend to hear these revelations first or mm-hmm. have a, an idea of what God is saying first, that there is an importance in not leading the witness because then you'll never know if they heard from God or if they heard from you. So, Mm -hmm. you know, to keep it to yourself. And then, and she tells the story of when he said, I think, I think we're going to be moving. I think we need to plant a church or something like that. And she Mm -hmm. was like, I know. Yeah, I know. And, and it was just, yeah. (laughs) We Um, have a story like that too, where we were living in Washington the first two years we were married and 
basically had to make some decisions about like next steps. And I knew we were going to go to Alaska. It had been right. kind of on our radar for a couple years, but not super um, dramatically. And it certainly wasn't something that we had been discussing in like our day-to-day -day conversations. But as we were kind of like, yeah, we're headed to Alaska next. But again, my default was to take that knowledge up, store it in my heart, mm -hmm. <laughs> realize A, you might be wrong and B, until God tells you otherwise, you're not meant to share that. You're meant to just pray about it. Mm -hmm. And my husband came out of the bathroom one day. This is always the joke. Like the idea just popped into his head while he was in the bathroom. He comes out of the bathroom and says, you know, I've been thinking, what about Alaska? And, and it was the exact same thing. It was like, yeah, I was just kind of waiting for you to figure that out. <laughs> That's funny, but it is nice. It's like a built-in confirmation because when you're talking about yeah. hearing from God, for me, I am not, I, I think there are some people who hear and know, and I mm -hmm. am always analyzing and reanalyzing mm -hmm. and overanalyzing. Mm -hmm. Is this really him? Is this really God? Um, so I do a lot of second guessing and I need a lot of confirmation before I will stand on. Yep. This is what God's telling me. One interesting time though, that this happened to me was, um, I was leading a good news club, which is like an after school, mm -hmm. you know, cause you were part of it, you were helping and your kids came and, um, it was, they were about to renew for the next year and we were getting all geared up and something told me that it was God telling me, I think that it, that we were not going Mm -hmm. doing it that next year. And I didn't understand why, you know, why, why that would be. It just kind of came as a surprise. Mm -hmm. And for me, when thoughts come as a surprise to me, that's when I think maybe it's God because it's not something I normally would have thought. Right. Right. But, um, but the way that I remember it happening, I knew that this was going to happen and it ended up, the principal didn't approve it for that year. And mm -hmm. I would have been really angry at the principal right. probably. And I think I would have been, um, I don't know. I think I would have been disappointed more, but it actually, what happened was that was the fall when we started the podcast, uh, our original mm -hmm. podcast. And yeah. I think, I don't remember what, what year it was, but I think that was the year that my book got published. Mm -hmm. um, that sounds so, right. There was a lot of stuff that happened that um, that was just changing of seasons and God mm -hmm. knew that. And so I, th I think that was a time when it was really comforting for me and faith building for me that God revealed that to me as I was praying, God, give us favor with the leadership of the school. Yep. And then I just felt like, no, you don't need to pray that way. Anymore. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. Well, I want to address this listener's second question, but before that, I had just another slight kind of word of warning to other people who have the gift of discernment who regularly do here, because every so often, I feel like if, if God is kind of, I don't want to say in the habit, but how about if you're in the habit of kind of hearing from God about major things before they happen, mm -hmm. and then something happens that you had no warning of whatsoever, mm -hmm. I just want to encourage you to not blame the Lord. God never owes you a heads up, Ooh, right? That's and good. Yeah. You know, like I, I feel a little silly for continuing to go back to a dog, but that definitely happened when we had to rehome Kitty, who was so much a beloved part of the family yes. and none of us saw it coming. And to be totally honest, if we knew that this most recent movement that we would have had to get rid of Kitty, we wouldn't have even considered it. It would have been off the table from yeah. like sentence one. Yeah. And so there definitely was a sense of God. Why didn't you give me a heads up? Like it, a heads up would have been nice Lord. And it's important to remember no matter how, often you do hear from God about these things. He never owes you an explanation. He never owes you a preview of what's coming up. Yes. And I think that is important because, you know, this, it kind of is in parallel. I've been really during COVID, I did a lot of like dessert and baking and mm -hmm. our family for a while got in the habit of dessert like almost yeah. every night. <laughs> nice. And then we got to the point where I was just like, you know, one night, one of the kids is like, what's for dessert? Not even looking up at me. Just, <laughs> hey, what's for dessert? Yeah. And I was just, well, 
dessert isn't a given. Yeah, you know? I don't I mean, owe it to anybody. Then you've gotten mm-hmm. in the habit of getting dessert, but yeah. I don't owe you dessert. You don't deserve yeah. dessert. And mm-hmm. so that's kind of the same thing where it's, we yeah. get in the habit of God including us in his plans, which is an amazing blessing, but we can never forget what a precious gift that is and how yep. undeserved it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, absolutely. So let's go to the second part of this question. So that sounds like there's a beloved family member or friend mm-hmm. who's critically ill. Everybody else is praying for healing. And this listener kind of has gotten a sense from God that healing is not on the table. Yeah. What's, what should she do? I definitely don't think it's time to tell family members. And I think this listener understands that that's, this is mm-hmm. not the time that would not be encouraging yeah. um, at the moment, probably mm-hmm. there. I think this is the time to pray, like you said, which is just so smart and so discerning in itself. How does this equip me to pray better? Who do I need mm-hmm. to pray for? Or how does this equip me to act and, and go to God yeah. a second time and say, okay, you've given me this now what, and really press right. in to what's mm-hmm. my next step. And it could be that it's preparing you for a conversation with someone that's not ready to let go. And they're asking your opinion, you know, do you Mm -hmm, think, or mm -hmm. um, maybe it's going to be after the fact that somehow it helps. Um, I don't, I don't know. Maybe there's going to be a hard decision, an end of life decision that needs to be made and someone comes Mm -hmm. for your, your wisdom and you can impart Mm -hmm. that. We can't know, but I think the important, it's so personal, but go to God and say, what now? Yeah. And I think a big reason why God might have revealed this to you is so that you can be praying not only for the sick individual, but for everybody else who's probably going to be left with, you know, questions and disappointments and could become something that shakes their faith to be, to be praying that these other people involved would be, you know, prepared for that. And, and let's go ahead and also remember it's possible that you did hear wrong. You know, like I, I sounds like you've got a very good track record and it sounds like you're a very discerning person. Even so might've been wrong. Right. And, and I don't think it's wrong to let God know what you want. Right. If it's your will, God, I'd love for you to heal this person. But again, not my will, but yours be done. Um, I would not feel bad joining in prayers with others. Right. That might almost feel kind of like what you said about being an imposter, right? I could see you almost might feel like a double agent when you're around people who are praying for healing. So in those cases, I would not feel guilty for, for being with these people and joining them in prayer. I would say that your job is to be just an encouragement to be praying for the people who are praying and really to just remember like God's not going to tell everybody everything ahead of time. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it's another reason to be important as a discerning person, like that you don't look down on people who aren't as discerning as you. And it doesn't sound like that's where the sister's heart is, Mm -hmm. but I would say, yeah, God's probably revealed this to you so that you can be praying for the people who are going to be left behind. And, and if there is something practical that could or should happen at that point, maybe it would be time for you to like, I'm just thinking of an example. Like if this person is a family member and their affairs aren't in order and it's going to be a huge mess if they pass or something at that point, it might be time to find a, a tactful loving way not to say, yeah, God told me this person's not going to make it, but so you know what we're praying for healing, but we, we are never going to know God's plans until they're fulfilled. Have we considered that this and that might need to happen, you know, or like Jamie was saying, those end of life decisions, I would say those are probably the reasons why you've received this sense ahead of time. But again, it's, that's a question that God can answer for you and he can't. I think my temptation, if I had special knowledge about something and I was praying, like, let's say the visa situation, Mm -hmm. my temptation might be to get in that prayer circle. And when it was my turn to pray, feel like it was my responsibility to (laughs) lead the prayers to prepare and say, well, Lord, you do say that not my, you know, Jesus said not my will, but yours. You know, Lord, that you don't always answer prayers. (laughs) So we are yeah. prepared in the event right. that you should choose right. not to, you know, so I think maybe not do that and make sure that you're not like, I mean, 
I don't know. I think if there's a scripture to offer, if there's wisdom to offer, if there's a conversation happening and you're saying, you know what, but God would be glorified no matter what. I think that's Mm -hmm. fine. But my temptation might be to get in there and sort of like talk to people and convince them through my prayers. Does that make sense? Right, right. Yeah, it does. But again, you also, you don't want to be disingenuous and like, you don't no. pretend like you're heartfully praying for something that you don't feel like God has given you release to pray for. You know, one other thing I was thinking, I don't have actually a lot of experience in like hospice care or being very, very close to someone mm-hmm. in their last days. But here's what I'm guessing. If we're talking about, okay, so let's take me, let's say I'm 85 years old on my deathbed. And I know I have lived a rich and loved and fulfilled life. And I am so excited that God is going to call me home. And as a discerning person, I know I'm on my way home pretty soon. Okay. If I'm surrounded by dozens of people who love me and are telling me that God's going to heal me and they just can't wait for the miracle God's going to do in me, I'm going to feel slightly discouraged. And if Jamie were to come to me, and, and this totally depends on the listener and on the patient and their relationship with each other and with the Lord. But Jamie, if you were to come to me and be like, you know what, Alana, it's okay if, if God calls you home, we're going to miss you, but we, we're giving you that release. Mm-hmm. I know that for many, many people, that is really important to be able to let go and mm-hmm. pass on. And so it could be again, totally depends on your relationship, the patient's relationship, their spiritual state, and your relationship with each other. But sometimes that kind of conversation might be really, really freeing and inspiring and encouraging. Like I remember I was about 12 when my grandpa was, um, he wasn't like in hospice or anything, but he, we didn't live close to each other. And basically we all were kind of told this is the last time you're going to see grandpa. And so we were each called, you know, to go into the bedroom to give our, our final goodbye. And he wasn't like, you know, ill at the time he was up and moving around and stuff. And I was just kind of chipper. I gave him a hug and I said, see you later. And even though he knew and I knew, and it just, it didn't feel genuine. Um, it's what I had the maturity for at the time. Like I don't blame mm-hmm. myself for that, but to be able to go and have like a real conversation about that, like if, you know, going back to me on my deathbed and Jamie was to come to me and be like, you know what? I know God's probably going to call you home soon. Let me just tell you how much our friendship has meant over the last decades. Right. Mm-hmm. Like that can be really, really good. So that's something that I would encourage our anonymous listener to just be praying about maybe it's time for you to have a chat with the patient but not you know there would be other times where that's just not going to be helpful either right so she's a discerning person i am sure that god's going to lead her into what she's meant to do with the revelation she's received i agree and you know and i think that all of that kind of addresses her question about you know why would god give me the, these revelations, Mm -hmm. if they're supposed to be encouraging, I'm trying to find that. Um, why do I have these answers when others around me would not be happy? Yeah. Yeah. When we're told God mm -hmm. is a God of hope. Yeah. And I think he is. Mm -hmm. And I think like, like, you know, we've been talking about that. Yes. What you have, if you get a, a revelation, it is for the purpose of prayer and encouragement and hope for people. Yeah. There are times where I have received a revelation, not known what to do with it, and then felt incredibly guilty. And I actually believe that that's kind of what has solidified my default is always going to be God's given me this information to pray. Both times that I can think of were times like one of them was really, really, I mean, it was awful. It had to do with like horrific abuse and like horrible, horrible things. But there was like I brought it to a couple people's attention, but basically all I had was a suspicion that there was something going on. Like there was oh, wow. nothing concrete. There was nothing that, that really could be done, right? You can't call the cops on somebody because you believe that somebody's a creep, right? Um, it turned out that my suspicions about this person were correct. It turned out that somebody was horrifically victimized and I felt very, very guilty. Like I, I should have done something more. And really what, what I came to 
what, what are you going to do? <laughs> you can't, you can't call the cops on somebody for a hunch you have that hasn't right. happened yet. Yeah. Right. Like <laughs> imagine that 911 call. Like, yeah, I believe my neighbors in 12 years is going to murder somebody. I need you to do something about it. Right. And so that's really what solidified. Like when you get these revelations, the default is just to assume that you're given this in order to pray for the people involved. And then beyond that, if there's more, God will show you that. Alrighty. So I think that, yeah, I think this was just a super fun discussion to have. And again, if you guys have questions or even if it's not a specific question, like what should I do in this situation? Just a topic that you would love discussed more thoroughly. You know, we would really love to cover your suggestions in a future Coffee Break episode. Um, you can submit your questions at prayingchristianwomen.com slash questions. All right. Well, let us, um, oh, okay. I was going to say. Do we have a prayers wait, for the unsaved? Oh, yeah, no, it's down there. It's down there. I was thinking, do we not have prayers for the unsaved <laughs> in our coffee breaks? We do. So for we those do. of you that don't know, um, prayers for the unsaved is a time where we pray for the one to three people, one to five people, just a small handful of people that God has placed on your heart to really faithfully pray for, for the long haul. And, um, you know, this is the kind of thing where, like, I know Alana has shared that there are times when God has released that burden of prayer, just like we were talking about. Sometimes God releases your burden. Um, but until then, or until they come to know the Lord, we are going to be faithful to pray for these people. Um, so, yeah, if you want to go to prayingchristianwomen.com slash unsaved, you can actually still get the 30 days of prayer for unsa for the unsaved. Um, I think it's in a PDF now instead of, no, it's an email sequence still. It is. We switched our system, but it's still, an, yeah, it's still an email, email sequence. So you'll get them delivered each day to your inbox for 30 days. And it's just great. These are some just multifaceted prayers for people um, that in your life that need the Lord. So without further ado, let's pray. Dear God, thank you so much that we have access to your word. Your word is powerful, Lord, and perfect. Your word is strong enough to meet my friend where they are today, to bring the conviction and repentance they need in order to come to you. There are so many distractions, Father, that will try to keep my friend from studying your word. Remove these disruptions, Lord, and give my friend a hunger to study the Bible. Speak to them and grant them spiritual understanding as they read. Amen. Amen. Let's go ahead and close with a prayer for our listener who sent in such a good question. Mm -hmm. God, we thank you for the opportunity to do these Coffee Break episodes. We thank you for every single person listening. I pray that today's episode would have been encouraging and inspiring. And we pray that you would guide us, that you would give us the discernment to know the things that you're trying to tell us and to also give us the wisdom to know what to do with that information. And we pray specifically for this issue with the ill loved one. I just pray that you would give our listener peace in her heart and wisdom to know exactly what to say and how to handle the information you've given her. And we pray for Jamie and for me and for all of us listening that you would protect us from hearing um, things that are not from you and that you would give us the discernments to know your voice. Amen. Amen.